You see the big stickers that we bought? Good evening, everyone, and welcome to an awesome evening with two really great vendors. Tonight is the launch of a new product line from All Star Sports Equipment. We will be monitoring the chat on the YouTube link tonight if you have any questions, and we have time to get to your questions later on in the evening. I'm joined tonight by three guests, Matt Arcovio with the Umpire Training Service, who is also an admin on the pages for Umpire World, Baseball and Softball Umpire pages, and many other uh, pages on the Facebook uh, social media platform. Jim Kirk, the owner of umpatire.com, and Stan Yurga, the Director of Product Development of All Star. Gentlemen, welcome to the call this evening. Thanks for having us. Glad to be here. Thanks for so, having us, So Stan, Stan, tell us a little bit about yourself and then uh, tell us a little bit about All Star. Sure. Yeah, definitely. So uh, I'm the director of product development and uh, that in a small company can mean a lot of things. I wear a lot of hats. A lot of what I do is spending time here in our test lab. So we have our air cannon behind us and later on, I'll kind of take you around and show you some other fun uh, devices we have here for testing product um, you know, for baseball. And uh, so it's a lot of R&D. We're always testing new materials, new designs. We're prototyping. Outside in our, our design space, we have two 3D printers. So we're always you know, you know, just trying to build new gizmos. Um, but I've got one foot in the lab and another foot on the field. And I think that's one thing that makes us really unique is that we have a very, very short feedback loop from the people who actively use our product to our design team here. So um, I'm talking with pro catchers, pro umpires, also a, a network of amateurs around the country as well, doing a lot of wear testing. And so we internalize that feedback and then bring it right back to the design team. So a big part of what we asked, whether it's a pro player or a high school player or college players, tell us what is working, but more importantly, tell us what's not working because those are the opportunities to keep improving the product line. And so that really short feedback loop from the active users to the design, I think it helps us just innovate very, very quickly. And we've kind of been propelled into kind of this, this leading role in Baseball Protective for that reason. Um, but before Baseball Protective, um, you know, we go back to 1860, believe it or not. Um, the, the origin of the company is a belt and suspender factory. And so we're located in North Central Massachusetts. We're about an hour, 45 minutes west of Boston. And just outside this, this wall here is a river. And back in the 1800s, basically that river powered everything in this building, all the looms and the weaves, the, the punches and what have you. Um, so the story goes that about hundred years after the start of the company in 1960, we had a sales rep in, in Chicago calling on Sears Roebuck. And I'm not sure how many people remember the, the Sears catalog, like the super thick, you know, chunky, um, you know, mail order catalog and the department stores that unfortunately are mostly, I think, gone out of business. But back in the, you know, the 1960s, you know, Sears was the target of today. And so our sales rep had a great meeting. You know, we had great belt, set, belt sales. People were still wearing suspenders. And so the sales were great there. But the rep asked my grandfather if we could build a jock strap because uh, Sears basically had a need for a, a jock strap. So with that first jock strap started the all-star division in 1960. And from that first jock strap, we basically went into football protective. So, you know, forearm guards, thigh, knee, tail, you know, hip pads, uh, did volleyball knee pads for a long time as well. And then in the 1970s, we started getting more focused on baseball. And that's when my dad kind of came on board, had some ideas on how to improve catcher's gear with wraparound shins and triple knee designs and other different uh, aspects. But the biggest thing that, that he did is really going back to that direct feedback. He started going to spring training. He started talking with catchers who, you know, at that point in time, the catchers were, were like looking around at him and saying like, why are you talking to me? Like everyone talks to the pitchers or they talk to, you know, the, 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 the big swingers over here. Um, no one talks to the catchers, you know? And, but he's like, no, like, I, I want to make a better product for you. Like, tell us, you know, how we can make something that you would really want to wear. And that's what we still do today. So when I go to spring training or to see, you know, the, the, the pro catchers, when I go to the annual umpire retreat for MLB umpires, we're still doing the same thing saying, hey guys, you know, like what's working, what's not working. And um, we really want to hear what's not working because we, we, we crave that. We, we want that constructive criticism to keep making the product uh, better. And so along the way, like, you know, some, some different stories there is like, you know, at one point, Charlie O'Brien, catcher for the Toronto Blue Jays, you know, back in the 90s, you know, gave my dad a call and it's like, hey, Stan, like, um, I'm kind of messing around with like a, a, a hockey goalie helmet, you know, and uh, I think we can make something kind of unique here. And so my dad jumped on it. And, you know, basically we invented, or I should say we, my dad and Charlie O'Brien invented, you know, the, the hockey style helmet. Um, and, you know, that, that was an interesting story trying to balance 
the protective qualities with what MLB would allow on field and things like that. Um, but it, but again, it goes back to listening, you know, trying to hear, you know, what what people want. Kind of along those lines, like when my dad was going to the annual umpire retreats, you know, he had several MLB guys say, "Hey, I just want I want leather forehead pad and a leather chin pad." And so that's what we have here. This is the model that C.D. Buckner wears and Ed Hicks Ed Hick wear. And truth be told, after we did the development, signed off on the design, this is one of our better, actually it's our best testing, uh, you, know, you know, umpire catcher helmet. Um, so it, it's all, about, again, about kind of listening to the needs of the, of, of the athletes, the players and the users. Um, you know, so, so we'll, we'll talk a little more of that as we get into some of the products. Um, but it's, it's, it's really integral to get that feedback. And going into this, this new umpire line that we've dubbed Cobalt, it's no different. We, we reached out to Jim and his staff. We've, we've utilized Matt's feedback extensively, and then Matt has a network of amateur umpires. Um, so it's all just trying to gather that feedback. You know, we, we'll send out prototypes that, you know, sometimes they look like they have just a little bit more than duct tape on them, you know, but they still kind of get the idea across. And then we start refining, um, building better samples and just keep trying to see what works. Great, great. Well, um, just just for my curiosity, you say you're in Massachusetts. Can you tell me what the name of that vehicle is that you drive down the road? How do you say that? Oh, I don't know. Like, is, is it a, is a, a oh, car? car? Well, how oh, do you car. Think? oh, yeah. No, we park a car at Harvard Yard. Okay, I just wanted to double check that. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 you know, I'm, born, I'm born and raised here, but like, I don't know if I grew up on Sesame Street or whatnot, but I have like no New England accent. Like my dad, my grandparents, like, you know, sawhorse is as a sawhorse, you know, for like, you know, construction, like, you know, like I somehow it just skipped a generation or something like that. So, um, but yes, I, I uh, have no New England accent whatsoever. I grew, right. up, so gentleman has, I grew up 30 minutes from you, Stan, and I don't have it either. There you go. There you go. So gentleman, has Stan done a good job introducing himself and introducing all stars is there anything we've left out that he needs to tell us? Oh, Matt, don't do it. Oh, uh, well, you know, when, when I say, when I talk about All-Star, I say they've got the, the smartest people making their, their products. And, and that is absolutely true of Stan. He's too humble to talk about the places he went to school. But let's just say a couple of places in Cambridge that, that do okay. Yeah, they're all right. Yeah, somehow they let me in. I, I was the mistake, I think. So, but anyway. <laughs> well, Tommy, I'll just chime in and say, you know, I've been working with All-Star for many years. And I did not know that origin story until uh, Stan and I discussed it on a call um, about mm, four to five weeks ago. And I told him, I said, you've got to share that story. No one knows, you know, no one really knows who you are. I mean, I see Stan and Brad. Brad is Stan's brother um, at the uh, minor league baseball uh, trade show every year, uh, every year that I'm there. You guys have a great setup. Uh, they are very professional and, um, but i never knew the origin story and I loved it. And, you know, and it's one of those really good stories where it starts out with uh, a need and then someone works hard at it. And then next thing, you know, uh, it develops into something else. And so really impressive stuff. And I think everyone's going to get a sense tonight about just, uh, you know, I know we talked about, <laughs> you know, you need a lab coat because you're in your lab right now. Sure. And, and that's the other part, right? Your job is you're the head of product development at All Star. So whether it's catcher's gear or umpire gear, everything starts up here in that head of yours, right? So um, we, have a team. we have a team. It's not well, just- I know, I know, I know. I just, I'm not saying that you, you know, that the team doesn't make, but I, I'm sure a lot of it comes from up here or, or vice versa. Someone has an idea, right? And then shares it with you. Yeah. So, uh, so I think it's been um, uh, really neat to hear your story. Uh, of All Star, and then also of what you're doing, and I'm so glad that you agreed to to make the Cobalt the Umpire World needs, um, you know, uh, more companies uh, involved in Umpire Gear. It's important, and we appreciate you taking the time out tonight to be on this call and educating everyone. I'm really looking forward to seeing some of the gadgets and and things you're getting ready to do here. So, let's 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 roll. Yeah, fantastic. All right. Well, why don't we start off with. Well, one last thing. Oh, yeah. Before we get started, uh, everybody sit back and relax because when we went through the dry run of this last week, I was really wowed by what you're getting ready to see. So we're going to get out of the way and Stan, you've got the floor. We're going to sit back and watch this magician and you'll understand why when you got, watch him here in a few minutes, show us the all-star product line. So Stan, it's all yours. All right. Thanks, guys. 
So, so before we dive right into this whole new cobalt line, we're, we're gonna kind of do a little refresher on our magnesium mass, just because it's such a big anchor item. You're seeing it on TV with a number of professional umpires and it's just such a great product um, that, that really, again, the umpires just are just loving. So let's just start there, then we'll, we'll start getting into the cobalt line. So this is our magnesium mask. And the need here is we're, we're on the quest to find something that was lighter than titanium, but tests like steel. And by that, I mean, ha has more dampening properties that absorb energy. Because on, on average, steel, uh, or titanium rather, it's pretty stiff. And that's not exactly what you want in a material that's supposed to absorb energy before it ultimately gets into your head, into your brain. So magnesium was a great you know, material to, to look at in terms of the properties. Again, it's, it's lighter than titanium, so check that box. And in terms of mechanical properties, in terms of how it bends, it, it behaves much like steel. And you might think bending is bad, and certainly you don't want something that bends too easily. But what I'm concerned about is your first line of defense is, well, let's talk about physics first. So, so we, we, we work in this world of, of conservation of energy. So that's one of the fundamental laws of physics. So you've got a ball coming at your face, and that ball has kinetic energy and that, that energy has to go somewhere. So your first line of defense is if you can kick the ball one way or the other to deflect the ball, that's great because off goes more kinetic energy or I should say more, but off, off goes some of that kinetic energy away from you. But no matter how much a ball gets deflected, there's still some that has to get absorbed. But actually I should first point out too, like one of the design elements of the magnesium is you can see how tapered this mask is. And one of our signatures that we started doing first in our, our, our hockey style helmets and then in our traditional face mask was putting this vertical bar down here instead of the traditional upside down U shape because that upside down U shape is pretty flat and, and very, very perpendicular to the, the, the most common direction of the ball. So by putting that vertical bar here and having more of an ax blade, you really help to deflect the ball one way or the other so that again, you're diverting that energy away from you. But as soon as you make contact, that energy has to go somewhere. And so, your first line of defense is, is that, that material. If you have something super, super stiff that doesn't bend, yes, that will last a lifetime and you'll never have to replace it. But being so stiff, it doesn't absorb any energy whatsoever. So, so think about taking a metal bar, you know, I got a pen here, but if you think about taking a metal bar and bending it permanently, it takes energy to bend it permanently. And that's energy that would otherwise travel further into the, into the system, which is the padding and then ultimately your head. So the magnesium, given a big enough impact, I'm talking like over hundred miles per hour, it'll start to bend. And so here's one, one of our victims from quality control testing. This, this saw about 12 or so shots at 110 miles per hour, starting with the left eye socket, the nose, you know, the forehead, the chin area. And you can see that it's starting to get pretty mangled. Now, I don't want you to think that that happens in, in the real world because since we've had this mag magnesium debut about four years, I've seen basically one come back from a pro player. And I don't think we've, we may have had one from a, a, like a warranty issue of some sort, but very, 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 very low. Um, it's because it is, it is super strong and super durable. But again, given a big enough impact, it will bend and that makes me feel better about uh, the protective qualities. So now we're gonna talk about the padding system. And this is gonna involve, again, feedback from a pro player. So. As we we're working on the magnesium, I was sharing this with Jonathan Lucroy, a longtime big league catcher. We have a very close relationship, talk all the time. And uh, Jonathan unfortunately had a concussion using uh, one of our titanium masks, uh, uh, gosh, maybe like eight, eight, or, eight or nine years ago. His, his recollection is that the mask basically pivoted and, and the, the bar made contact with the chin. So he's very, very sensitive to this area, thinking that maybe we could improve the design somehow. So he, he's the one that proposed like, hey, why don't you drop the padding down below the bottom perimeter bar? And that makes total sense because if you look at a lot of other designs that have been longstanding, when you, when you stop the padding right at the bottom edge, as soon as you com compress the mask, that bottom bar essentially can slip off the padding. Not exactly good for force transmittal. So by extending the pad about a half an inch lower, whenever we compress the frame from an impact, we're getting the benefit of this whole entire bottom perimeter pressing onto the padding. So the, the more that we can util utilize the padding, the more we can spread the load. 
And the more that we can spread the load, the better we can do at absorbing the energy. The worst you could have is, is, is a concentrated force in one location. That, that's that's the, the worst. So, so that was Jonathan's first idea. And we made some prototypes, did some testing, and compared to regular, I say regular, um, the pads that basically ended up at the bottom edge, the ones that went a little bit longer, we saved about 10 Gs. And you might think, wow, 10 Gs, like that's huge because you think about a fighter pilot, they pass out sometimes around four or five Gs. So you're thinking like 10 Gs, wow, that's, that's a massive change. But the difference is a fighter pilot will pass out with like five Gs sustained through a turn. Whereas when we're talking about impacts to a face mask, when we fire up the air cannon and you'll see the head forms a little bit later, the, the, the energy of that ball basically gets into the head and in, in about 10 milliseconds. So it's just like this, 10 milliseconds and it's done. And so it's a very quick peak. So 10 Gs might sound like a lot, but in the real world, it's about doing a jumping jack. So I just like to kind of frame that in, in some, some real world uh, experiences to, to just be very open with everyone and not make any false claims. So, so that was his first idea, you know, extend the padding. And then he said, well, what about putting a plastic plate between the metal bars and the padding? And again, I really liked his thinking because when we, we think about a hockey style helmet like this, you have the cage that instead of going right to the pads, it goes into a shell. And that shell helps disperse that energy over a bigger area. It incorporates more padding, so you get more force dispersion. But also anytime an energy wave goes from one material to another, you're going through these different interfaces. And anytime you, you cross an interface, you do not have very good coupling of that energy. So you kind of disrupt the energy wave, if you will. So by having more interfaces between the ball and your head, you, you again are dissipating energy. And so going back to Jonathan's idea of, of putting a plastic plate inside the chin pad, it made total sense to me. And so we made some prototypes and again, we tested them. So we had three sets of, of prototypes. We had, again, the kind of the regular pads that ended at, at the lower bar. We had the pads, same exact construction, but just they went lower like this. And then we had a third set like this that had the plastic plate internalized. So you can't see it. Um, and so what we found is by adding the plastic plate, we got another 10 Gs of savings. So on net, by dropping the pad, Adding the plastic plate, we got 20 Gs. And 20 Gs, like that's starting to be somewhat meaningful, you know? So, um, and anytime we see measurements here in the lab that are going towards less energy, that's a direction we want to head. So, um, so once this got out, we heard tremendous feedback from people. Um, again, I just like to put out there, there's, there's nothing that's concussion proof. You know, I don't want there to be any misconceptions about anything I say here, but the feedback anecdotally was, was wonderful. I mean, people said they were just, just felt great. It's kind of weird when people say, yeah, I felt great taking that, you know, getting smoked by hundred miles per hour. It didn't, you know, it, I didn't feel a thing. That, that's, that's what gets me up in the morning and motivates me is, is hearing that feedback from the players and knowing that we're, we're doing the best we can to protect them. So, so again, it's, it's a whole system, you know, we're, we're, you're talking about the metal alloy. Um, you're talking about the padding system and anything else you can add in between to help disrupt that energy wave. Um, one thing too, is there's a lot of talk about mask and safety and that lightweight is bad. And certainly that is true if you're driving down the highway and you're driving a Mini Cooper and a big semi comes by and bowls you over, like that's definitely important. You know, having more mass will, will help you stay safer um, in, in a high-speed collision in a vehicle. When we talk about the mass of masks or, or the weight of, of masks, we're not talking about very large differences. And based on our testing, the thing that matters most in terms of the, the testing of a traditional face mask is not so much the weight, but how stiff that, that metal material is. Um, so, that, so again, when I say this is like very lightweight, I don't want anyone to think that that is in any way compromising their safety, because in terms of testing, this is our, our best testing product that we offer for a traditional face mask. Very, very low SI numbers, very, very low peak G. Um, so we're very, very proud of this. Uh, and again, that feedback we hear from people saying that they, they love it, they feel like a difference is wonderful. So um, then, uh, so, so one, one of the questions is coming up um, is, can we do the same thing on the forehead? Stay tuned, we, we are working on something like that. But in the meantime, we, should, we could probably segue into the, the, the skull cap actually, um, because that, that is, is kind of part, part of the answer as well. And before we do oh. that, um, so you, you said that there's the bottom pad of the mask in addition to being 
uh, oversized compared to the frame, there's also a, a plastic insert, right? Yes. And go ahead. So it, why don't you do that on the top pad? Great question, Matt. It doesn't fit, to be perfectly honest, because just the geometry is such that it just doesn't work. We tried it and it, it's maybe hard to get a sense here, like, you know, looking on a camera, this chin, the chin pad is actually quite flat by design. The forehead is just much more rounded. And so it was, it, it just didn't, didn't work. But stay tuned, we are working on some things. I can't tell you what they are right now, but, um, but, but we are thinking about that because, I mean, quite honestly, that, that was, uh, I'll, I'll be honest, like that was a blind spot. You know, we're, we're thinking about a catcher, you know, who, who's had an experience in his chin. And, and quite honestly, we hear from so many people that the chin shots are what rings their bell. You know, that, that's, and there's, there's some theories about that. Um, some have been dispelled. Um, some, I, I think there's, you know, if, if you think about getting hit in your forehead, which has no movable bones, no ligaments, no muscles, it's pretty solid up here. When you get hit down here in your jaw, you have a lot of movable parts. You have your TMJ, you've, you've got ligaments and, and muscles. So, you know, I think there's a lot that you feel more, you feel more pain from, from a chin shot. It's more jarring. Um, there's, there's still, to my knowledge, no data that says any one place is worse than another. What we know is that it's, it's the success of multiple repeated impacts within a short duration that are the things to really worry about the most. One thing on the chin, though, is, you know, if you, if you think about a boxer, you know, you, you know a boxer is going to try to send in a hook. And the reason is, is they're, they're trying to sp basically spin the person's head. And we also know that, you know, a, a straight on hit to the head where your head moves in a linear fashion in a straight line is much less severe than an impact that spins your head. So any kind of whiplash motion tends to be more jarring. So I think that's another reason why sometimes the chin shots, you know, feel worse and maybe produce maybe to, to the player's experience a more severe concussion because there's more of a rotation effect versus getting it in the head. Sorry, am I, am I getting too deep? I just wanted to, I wanted to chime in and, and you know, thank you for your presentation about explaining the extension of the pad, the additional plastic, um, the, I think that's those are really uh, great. The magnesium is obviously, you know, these days magnesium um, is is a, a preferred uh, alloy over some of the uh, old, older style um, alloys. And um, uh, but one thing I also know is you mentioned the word geometry. You know, this mask is has a lot of geometry built into it. Uh, and and I know that we're getting ready to segue into something that's going to talk about a, a way to give you more protection up here on the forehead with that mask. Yes. But before you do, I'd like for you to just talk a little bit, just a little bit at least about the angu angular angles, yes. right, angles on that mask and why that's important. And I, and I almost forgot a really important thing, Jim, as well, is that we tried magnesium for probably about eight years and gave up because we're, we're basically trying to take what we do with steel and titanium and, and take, take bar stock and weld it to each other. And we, we would do that with magnesium. We get a batch in here to the test lab. We start testing 100 miles per hour. Hey, things are going great. And then ping, you, you'd get a bar snapping right across. You know, the magnesium never failed at the welds, but just beyond the welds, they'd fail. We tried all kinds of heat treatments to relax the stress from welding. We couldn't figure anything out. So we, we kind of gave up for about a year or so. And then I, I can't even remember how, but we, we basically came up with the idea of, of, you know, let's forget welding. Let's actually do injection molding. So, you know, there's... Um, different techniques out there, much like injection molding of plastic shells, you know, like they do for batting helmets and, and you know, skull caps and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, hockey style helmets. You can injection mold the magnesium. And that's what we do is we have a mold, inject the magnesium, let it cool, and it comes out, you know, solid. But with that, Jim, as you're pointing out, there's a lot of geometry in here. So, you know, if, if I go close here in the camera, you can see that because we're not welding anything, we have a lot of freedom in terms of the design. Like we, we have these beautiful filleted, radii all throughout multiple contours you know a very high degree of three three-dimensional uh, design it's not just you know a couple of bars welded together you have, have a lot of really interesting um, you know angles here so I just think it's a beautiful mask to be as, as well just it's just a really cool piece of equipment that's unlike anything that's, that's done before I'll, I'll even give you guys um, a little insight here this ear is a little bit chunky and the reason being is that it actually is welded there because when we were doing the R&D of this, we had so many bad 
experiences with the magnesium failing that we were not certain that this would work doing the injection. So for whatever reason, it was cheaper for us to build half of a mold and, and another half and then weld them together. And it's not just a weld, it's actually dovetails that fit together. So it's like these dovetails that are then welded. We can't break this at all, no matter how hard we try. And we did that again, because just, it was a lot cheaper to build two smaller molds and one big mold. And quite honestly, it worked and no one's ever complained about this look. And quite honestly, it's, it's useful because when I'm watching TV, it's a telltale sign that, hey, that umpire, he's wearing the magnesium. Mm -hmm. Because we, we also have the steel version, the FM4000 steel, that has the same geometry, but it's welded steel. And from a distance, the, the, the silhouette is very similar. Mm -hmm. But when you look at this ear, you're like, aha, that, that thick part that's, right there. That, that, so that's the, tell, that's the tell that's magnesium. And, yeah. I, and I really like what you said is you had a problem trying to do magnesium the way that you've always done every other material. And that was using welds. But because of that, you ended up having a solution that actually made multiple things better. So not only uh, can you have something that's magnesium, which does have some bend to it instead of it being solid um, and, um, you know, uh, uh, not, it, not, uh, uh, reflecting the uh, impact as much, but you also are able to build in all these different contours with it. And then on top of it, because you don't have any welds, you have no weak points. Exactly. And so you took a problem and you ended up having three solutions from it. it was, and, so, yes. and, you know, and, but just like, you know, about anything in life, whether it's about business or your personal life, any problem you solve creates, uh, creates another problem, right? And so if anyone has talked about this mass, the one thing we've heard from our customers is, we love the idea. We love the plastic in front. Why didn't why didn't someone think of that before? And then the thought was, well, why not a piece of plastic up here? But as Matt was was uh, working on getting getting the segue going for what's coming next, I think we're all ready for the uh, for the skull cap to yeah. explain. So yes, and 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 I want to go ahead and just help you frame this. Is the to me the skull cap? I hope I'm not taking any way of your thunder here. Don't be mad at me if you if I am. Is it's, it's two solutions in one, right? Because not only do you get the extra layer of protection here, you get more protection around. So I'll stop talking. Yeah. I'll let you take it from here. And uh, I cannot wait to see if, if any of you are, are watching right now, you're getting ready to see uh, a lot more fun, fun stuff that, that, uh, that, the, uh, the, that Dr. Stan is going to be sending, uh, sending your way. Yes. So, so, so I, t I tell a lot of stories. So, you know, cut me off if I go down these rabbit holes. Um, but this is the first piece in our cobalt line. It's an umpire skull cap, and it truly is umpire specific. The origin of why we started looking at it and the actual design is very umpire specific. And so it goes back probably about four years ago. We were approached by Mark Laton. He's uh, now retired, but at the time he was the head of umpire medical services for Major League Baseball. And he, he basically told us like, hey, look, we're having a problem. We're having more and more umpires get hit with bats, you know, either back swings or broken bats. Um, umpires are getting lacerations because the bats are cupped. Um, we need help. And so we started thinking about different things and, you know, trying to, to, to really kind of balance like the traditional look of the umpire and, you know, how they feel about, you know, their confidence on the field and how people per perceive them to the safety um, and, and what's really needed. So, um, so basically, we started well doing a number of things. I mean, one is getting feedback again. And this time we reached out to minor league umpires on a number of occasions and just had some anonymous, anonymous surveys and said, hey, those of you who are wearing traditional face masks, where do you want more protection? And we, and we listed a bunch of things like the chin, the cheek, the forehead. But what was the resounding answer for them was they wanted more protection on the top of the head, the side, and the rear. And it all kind of made sense because what we're seeing with both umpires and catchers is like, we, we have no hard data on this, but anecdotally just over the last, you know, again, three to four years, we we're just seeing more impacts from bats hitting the umpires and the catchers. And we started theorizing or hypothesizing that, you know, it's probably guys are trying to hit home runs more than average now. You know, they don't care about their average, they just wanna hit home runs. Um, launch angle, with the rise of analytics, people are hitting, or, you know, batters are not swinging more planar. They're, they're basically kind of going, you know, up, more at an angle. And if they're going up more at an angle, they're going to come back down and clock the umpire and the catcher. And then the, thing that's, the third one that really surprised me when I was talking to, to pro catchers last year about, you know, these two ideas or these two hypotheses, they said, yeah, those are both true, 
but it's the catchers. You know, we, the catchers are causing the problem too. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like no catcher wants to get hit on purpose from a bat, but it all has to do with analytics. And so catchers who are getting judged more, you know, intensely or, or, or scrutinized more uh, with stat casts and other analytics that the teams have is that if they're catching a breaking ball, they're scooting up maybe three inches, four inches, five inches closer to the plate to catch the ball in the zone versus out of the zone. So they're getting scored you know, for, for calling, you know, catching more strikes. By moving up, they're dragging the umpire up with them and everyone's getting closer to the batter. So it's just kind of a perfect storm of all these things. So again, based on that feedback, what we're hearing from, from, from the umpires is that th we needed more protection on the side, the rear and the top. And so if you look at our skull cap, we've got these raised ridges on, on, the, on the side, up through the back and up over the top. And what we're trying to balance here is, you know, no one wants to be Mr. Potato Head on the field and have this huge helmet. So we're trying to, to augment the padding in, in key areas without making the helmet look too bulky. And the most important feature of the shell is, is the visor. This is the length of a four stitch cap. And we felt very strongly about that because the last thing we want is for the face mask bars to make contact with the visor. So this doesn't probably doesn't show it very well on the camera. But when you have the, 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 the forehead, again, talk about augmented protection in the forehead, this is part of, part of the solution right now, is that the last thing you want is for these metal bars to get pushed from the impact into this visor because this visor is very, very stiff and it's gonna send a lot of energy right, in, right into your head. And for years, I've been concerned about this because um, catchers have been doing this for a number of years, a couple of the guys like Kevin Cash, uh, who's now the manager for the Tampa Bay Rays. He always wore as a catcher, his, his visor forward and, and, a, and a full length visor as well. Uh, Jared Saltomachia did it for many years and Wellington Castillo uh, still does it. And last year, Wellington Castillo took a foul tip and you know, it's, it's hard to tell for certain. Well, I guess, I guess you know the result because what happened was in a slow-mo replay of this collision of, of, of the foul tip into his mask, there is a chunk of plastic that came off the visor and basically spun and fell to the ground, like a chunk about this big. And for spending 15 years in this room testing helmets, it takes a tremendous amount of energy to break ABS plastic or polycarbonate. So that meant that basically his, his head took the full brunt of that blow and, and resisted that, that force. Not a good situation. Um, so, so that kind of confirmed, we'd already been working on a shortened visor at that point, um, but it really confirmed the, the importance for that in terms of safety. On the inside, we have a really nice liner system. It's, it's a 3D mesh liner, so it breathes very well. It has great moisture uh, you know, wicking properties. And as you can see, you can see the augmented padding around the sides, the rear, and the top. All the padding is held in place by Velcro. So it all, all comes out like so. And, and that's nice, uh, especially if you've got you know, a, a, a day long of, of plate sessions. Uh, you know, mid, mid, midday, you can take out these liners, put in a fresh set. So nice and dry. You can also wash these in, in a regular home, you know, uh, you know, washing machine, line dry them. So you just got a, a lot of great value in this, this, this helmet. It comes in four sizes, small, medium, large, extra large. But the way we designed this liner is such that it can accommodate different head shapes. And this, this might be telling you guys a little bit too much, but um, during the course of this project, I had the opportunity to measure major league umpire heads. And so I took, you know, the, the, the front to back distance, the side to side, I have these enormous calipers, you know, which they look kind of weird, you know, but, um, but then I also have something called a contour gauge that basically will trace a portion of a person's uh, head. And so doing some fun, fun math, you can basically recreate the shapes of the different heads. And out of, out of the 50 major league umpires that I measured and we recreated their, their basically a cross section of their head where they wear their plate cap, not two umpires have the same head shape, even though I think almost all of them have seven and a quarter cap sizes. So what that means is that just everyone has such different shapes, like, you know, very, very oval shapes, pinheads, very, very round shapes, trapezoidal, some people have funky bumps. So, so basically with this, this liner system, the forehead wraps around to the sides. So you can put a thicker liner side to side and front to back to get a more custom shape and kind of mix and match in between sizes to, to really dial in the fit that's unique to your own, you know, head shape. Um, and so, uh, and so in terms of the, the standard sizes, uh, there's a great question you're coming in. It's like, you know, how do I find out what size you would need for the helmet? We go by basic cap sizes. So if you know you wear a seven and a quarter cap size, I believe that's a size large 
if I'm remembering correctly. I mean, we have all the circumferences um, and the cap sizes uh, you know, correlated with the small, the medium, the large, and the extra large. So start there. And then if you find that it's a little bit loose side to side, you can basically get a replacement pad that's that's a little bit thicker, you know, go one size down. Um, so, um, so terrific fit. Another part on the fit is if you look here, you can see that the rear pad sticks below the shell by about an inch. And so you basically, that, that's because pretty much everyone has this thing, this, this bump on the back of their head called the occipital lobe. That's a fun word, SATs, you know, crap. Um, so if you put that on there, this little, uh, you know, drop in the padding basically hugs that bump, which is super handy because, you know, well, if you're using a magnesium mass, it's not an issue because this thing's like basically a pound. I mean, it's super lightweight. But if you have like a old heavy, you know, steel mask, that's gonna be putting some weight down. That's gonna help keep it locked on your head and, and, and resist to falling off. The, the finish is a, what we call a sand mat. So it's a highly textured matte finish that actually has, has grit in it. So it's like sandpaper. And that's again, to, to grab the, the harness of the face mask to res, you know, resist slipping. The other thing that we have available is the, what we call a Delta Flex harness. It's got bare neoprene on the inside and that bare neoprene has a bit of grip as well. This is what we do in the catcher's line and the catchers love it because it really keeps the mask in place on their plastic skull caps. So the same thing is true here with, with the umpire line is that you know, you've already got this, this, the sand mat texture, but that Delta Flex harness has a lot more adhere, adherence to um, or stick to, to the shell. So, um, I mean, actually kind of made me think of something I, I, I forgot earlier too. Um, and it's, it's kind of relates because you know, we're going matte black because that's obvious, you know, that's, that's preferred color for, for umpires. But back to this magnesium, the first, you know, couple of years out, we only had the silver color. But one thing that we picked up from the, the umpires, um, you know, I think Chris Guccione was the first one to tell me that he was basically spray painting his black. And I, I always get kind of weirded out by paint because if you don't paint properly, it can delaminate and flake. And the last thing we want is, is flakes of paint going to someone's eye. But then the best story is Jim Wolf. You know, he got the magnesium and silver. He used a Sharpie to basically color the whole thing black. And every night he'd have to like resharpie it after it had a plate appearance because during the game he would take it off and, and put it under his arm and all the Sharpie was coming off on his forearm and kind of wearing off the mask. So based on that umpire feedback, they were the, the, the whole impetus behind getting a matte black cage. Uh, so again, listening, you know, just trying to hear what the needs are. So anyway, so, 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 so back to the, the skull cap. Um, let's have some fun in the lab. So let's, let's go for a little bit of a tour. Yeah, and I wasn't going to let you get away with that because I was like, please show the lab. This is yes, really yes. cool. I, I'm so sitting if you're watching now, yeah. this is one of the coolest parts of the evening. So here, um, like, like I said, this, this is a working lab. So like you know, we do R&D here. Um, we also do quality control. So our technician, Lewis, he's going to be a little upset with me because I've basically kind of cleared out his lab. He had a whole bunch of racks of, of helmets in here, but you can see these are some that are in the process of quality control testing. And if you bear with me, we'll kind of get a little bit of a tour here. So um, I'll move this. So over here, if I can change the angle here, um, this is our air cannon. And right now I'm not gonna show you a blast just because I've got the head form somewhere else, which is really exciting. Um, this is the Noxie thoracic surrogate. This is what is the basis for the new Noxie standard for chest protectors that high school kids are required to wear. And then starting this year, the NCAA is requiring as well. This is basically a torso of a 14 year old child because commodial cordis really affects ages 14 plus or minus a few years. Once you get above age 18, it's, it's almost non-existent in baseball. Um, but we're, we're doing quality control testing and we did all of our R&D and testing uh, with this guy. So the air cannon, um, it's pressurized with air. We can shoot up to about 120 miles per hour with baseballs. We also shoot uh, softballs and uh, lacrosse balls. Then over here, if I tip this down, this is the Noxy drop test. So you have a, have a carriage here that, that goes up vertically. So it'll come down and drop. And what we mount onto the carriage are these head forms. These are biofidelic head forms. Uh, if you took a cross section, you would see that the cranium is filled with uh, basically a viscous oil to simulate a brain sloshing around. In the very center of mass of the head up through this channel, we mount an accelerometer, which you'll see in just a moment. 
Uh, we've got three different sizes. This is the, the football lineman size, um, very, very large head uh, that we test our largest helmets on. We have a youth head form, and then we have what's called the medium head form, which is sort of your, your average 90th percentile adult head. But regardless of what head form you use, you, you mount it on the carriage like so, and it basically drops with the helmet onto the anvil. And then for te testing to the Nazi standard for hockey style helmets, we basically drop onto this round anvil. And this is basically meant to simulate getting hit with a baseball bat. Now that's what we're required to do. But when you think about it, like, you know, if you're getting hit with a baseball bat, this apparatus is more like you're putting the baseball bat on the ground and you're whacking your head against it. That's not really the, the real world. So what we did is we, um, we thought, well, hey, look, we're trying to study for umpires, you know, how to protect against, um, you know, how do we protect against bat swings? So if we're really trying to protect a, a professional umpire from, from a bat swing, why don't we actually swing a bat at, at the head? So that's what we have here. So this is, again, our Noxy head form. In the center of mass is the accelerometer. There's this little blue cable here, and that blue cable runs over to our KME. And it will reset that to be zero. This is gonna record what's called the severity index, which is what NOXI requires for, for meeting their, their safety standards. You can think of the, the severity index as more or less the, the total energy of the impact. We also record the, the peak G, the, which is basically the peak force. So what we'll do is, I'm gonna put this back over here so you have a better sense of the big picture here. Um, first, what I'm gonna do is, is strike the head form with, with no protection. Um, okay, we'll reset over there, and it takes a minute, or not a minute, but a couple seconds to upload. So just fix your eyes over here. There's nothing up this sleeve, nothing up this sleeve, Tommy, from the magician. So if you watch, wait for it. Wow. So that sounds pretty painful, looks pretty painful. The velocity was 7.2 meters per second. That's about 16 miles per hour. Most major league uh, guys have a backswing of like 20 to 30 miles per hour, plus or minus. And you can see the result here, if I go steady, is um, actually, oh, am I, hey, Tommy, am I, am I mirrored? Does, it, does that number look like 1654? You are good. It's okay. coming across 165.9, I believe. Oh, actually, 1,659. Oh, 1,659. Yes. Wow. Wow. Well, so so that's really important because I'm not sure how many people are familiar with this. Noxy sets a threshold of 1,200. So for any batting helmet, football helmet, catcher's helmet uh, that has to meet the Noxy standard, you have to be below 1,200. And if I want to get really nerdy, I can bring out a whiteboard and show you the statistics we have to do because it's not simply being below 1,200. It's showing that over the course of all of your quality control testing, that when you, when you do a, 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 a normal distribution of the values, that you would have no statistical failures. So in other words, you take your average of all your, all your quality control data and make sure you're, you're more than three standard deviations away from 1,200. So it's, it's actually, you need to be below 1,200 to really be safe. Now, what does 1,200 mean? So Noxie said that because based on their research decades ago, that was basically what resulted into a skull fracture. So a lot of what Noxy is concerned about is a skull fracture. Skull fractures, bad, like catastrophic, like potential death. When, when you've, you've got, I mean, a lot of you probably know that, that football at one point was almost banned because there are too many skull fractures happening um, back in the 1900, early 1900s. So, um, so basically that's really what we're, we're guarding against mostly, you know, the, 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 the absolute extreme situation of a skull fracture. So again, if we look here, you know, at, at 1,659, that is not a good, a good severity index. That's, that's pretty damaging. Um, definitely, you know, to, to the point of probably having a skull fracture. If you look at the, the peak G, 326 peak G. Now there's, there's no, there's no clear cut threshold for concussions. Um, there's kind of like you said, like probability curves based on risk. And once you start going above 300 Gs, you're definitely in the realm of pretty much a guaranteed concussion from a single impact. Again, there's no threshold that says if you're below it, you're, you're free from concussions because everyone is so different. We go to concussion conferences several times a year. 
and we have really smart people like um, like down the road, uh, 20 minutes away is Dr. Robert Cantu, who's one of the, the big authorities on sports related concussions and CTE. Um, you know, he was talking last year at a conference that we've known for for better part of a decade that people are very different with regard to their uh, how they experience a head blow. Like if I you know hit Tommy, me, Jim, and Matt with the same exact impact, same velocity, same location, same magnitude, we would probably have four different responses. What's new as of last year is that researchers have seen that yes, there's a variation between people, but that variation is even bigger than we ever thought. So, um, so it's it's just again, I can't highlight enough that everyone's different um, when it comes to that. So um, let's let's do this. Enough uh, talking about theory. Let's look at some some more measurements. I'm going to reset this guy again to zero. We're going to come over here and do it all over again. But the one thing that we're going to change is is put the the cobalt skull cap onto the head form. So put this guy on here and. Line. So that's going to come in. Okay, and then you'll run the program again. Again, just wait a moment. Okay, that still sounded really bad. Um, let's see, 7.7 meters per second. So again, that's roughly around 16 miles per hour. Um, here, the severity index. So, Tommy, do you see an eight zero 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 eight? Hey, Tommy, is that what you see? Do you see just basically zero 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 eight on there? Yes, I see zero zero zero, and it looks like an eight at the end. Yes, perfect. So, that, that's pretty dramatic. So, we went from like one thousand six hundred down to single digits. Huge, huge change by introducing the skull cap. Um, and then, in terms of the peak G we're down to 30. So we went from 300, I think it was 325 or three something, 300 something, now we're down to 30. So we basically cut that by a factor of 10. So again, it's just, it's super important. You know, we, we know bat swings are rare, but when they happen, they can be pretty, pretty bad. And it, you know, I don't want to be like using scare tactics here because the reality is that what we see here in the lab is worst case scenario. So when I've got you know the air can set up, you know I've got the head form positioned. I have an indicator that drops out, you know, a little little pointer here, and so that pointer, you know, it's an, it's a knuckleball coming out, but it's plus or minus like a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch. So it's pretty accurate. So we can we can hit things the worst way possible. So you know things that don't typically happen in the real world because most most impacts are grazing angles. You know there, there's a lot of deflection involved. Um, but here we always strike things perpendicular. So we get maximum force transmission um, to be kind of worst case uh, scenario. Um, does that make sense? Hey, thanks so much, uh, Stan, for that. You know, welcome, you know, bringing you, uh, bringing us all right into your lab and, and letting us see what you do there. And what a, what a great thing that is that, uh, you know, through technology that we can join you there in, uh, you know, in, uh, up in Massachusetts and, uh, and, and that was just great. I mean, just, I mean, look at all how much uh, force uh, that, that was reduced. And, you know, one thing I really like about the skull cap um, is the bill, right? And that you designed it for the bill only. I know in the old days you had a, you were headed down that way. Uh, you had a, a cap that you called the Bill Welke cap uh, that uh, Major League Umpire Bill Welke wore because it had the shorter, the shorter bill to it. And, I know that there have been said have been some talk even as early as uh, or even as, as I guess as late as this year about uh, some people wearing uh, coaches helmets um, as that extra layer of protection yeah. for umpires. But one thing that we did our due diligence on and shared with all of our uh, followers was how we needed to be really careful about the bill length. So I'm just going to just do one little thing on my thing just as a PSA. If you will let me share my screen, is um, on the on the bill. Let's see. Here we go. Okay. So so what you see here is this is this is actually a um, this is actually an all star helmet. Okay. So it's an all star helmet, and it is and everyone can see that, right? 
Um, and so there's a cap here. This is a this is a four inch cap. Yeah. So even though you can wear your helmet, yes, underneath your four inch cap, your four inch um, uh, four I'm sorry, your four stitch cap, then it's still out here, right? You don't want to get hit here. Okay. So you've also got the issue of of it being a a longer bill. If it was a a skull cap or a coach's helmet, we don't want this. We don't want this going out there. Oh, great, great yeah, Matt. That's, I've got them here side by side. This yeah. is. You, you see that you see that right and so we've seen longer than that so um this is a um um you know we just we just want to be able because what here's here's what people sometimes don't don't forget don't uh, they forget about is and i'll stop sharing my screen here is you know it's not so much that it fits right so let's say you put your longer bill cap or your longer bill skull cap underneath your your helmet or your mask and you think, well, there's space. There's space in between the mask and the bill. But what, but you might get hit, and then you've got the compression to that area. So I appreciate, really appreciate, I know the community appreciates that you guys designed a cap for umpires. And I know Mark Laton and the powers that be at Major League Baseball and the umpires that have, have moved to this at the pro level appreciate that as well. And um, not only that, you made it comfortable. It doesn't look terrible, right? I mean, I know it's different. Different is hard, right? And so, uh, so we appreciate that. We appreciate you thinking out. I know one thing you didn't mention in, in detail was is how the grip, how much it grips with the sand, um, you know, blasting where you don't want you don't want the smooth coach's helmet where that where your harness will slip right over top of it. You know, that's kind of important that your mask stay on while you're wearing it too. So, so this is truly if you're going to wear a skull cap, I'm just going to say I know you you. You're not overselling it, and you're, you said you didn't want to be scary about anything, but I will say this. If you're going to wear a skull cap, a hard shell cap on its own, the way to go is the all-star cobalt skull cap that just came to market. Thank you, Stan. I'll let someone else talk. You, you bet. And, and Jim, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, or I shouldn't say hindsight is but it's funny how things change because the, the, the Welke brothers basically talked to my dad about doing the Welke cap. And we, we did have that in the line for like one year and it went nowhere. Like just the world was not ready for an umpire skull cap. Just there's so much resistance that I started here 15 years ago and that was pretty early on. So that was probably like 12 ish years ago. So much has changed since then. And so I just think that it's not for everybody. That's for sure. But I think we'll start seeing it being adopted more quickly. Um, just um, real quick to, um, Heading into spring training, just as the games are starting, we had 20 of the major league umpires wear testing our cobalt skull cap, but then the game stopped almost immediately. And so we basically, and, and let's just be honest, it's been it, just getting things started with, with spring train 2.0 and, the, and the, the season starting up. They had enough to worry about with all the different PPE regulations that I wasn't about to start pushing them on that. But we are seeing a couple guys kind of out there, you know, starting to use it. So. But you know, good things take time, so we'll see. So, so you expect you expect there'll be more people, more uh, at the professional level wearing this, and Matt shaking yeah. his head big time here in 2021. And we know how this works in this market, right, Matt? That when Absolutely. when the big guy, when the big league guys wear it, then that makes everyone else comfortable in wearing it down the minor league, down the college. Uh, right, right. I mean, I can guarantee you, if the major league guys aren't wearing it, the minor league guys are not going to want to wear it because that's where they want to get to, and then college and high school. And so, so I think if we can, if we can, um, if some people step forward, and I think there are starting to be some people step forward and wearing that, and the more you see it, the less awkward it looks. You know, right? That's just a pretty typical thing, right? Think about some of the fashion that used to be in that we used to wear when we were growing up. I mean, you look at it now, not so great, but that was the, that 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 was the fashion. Uh, the time and so uh, right now if we can make that more fashionable i think we've got a winner and i tell you what um and no, you said you don't get hit much there uh with the backswing but with some of the people that umpire so much and I, I know guys matt you know guys you feel free to chime in who get hit often with a backswing yeah. because they do so many games and so now your risk level goes up exactly. 60 bucks to save your head right most yep. people don't, aren't on the workers' comp plan that Major League Baseball umpires are on. They're yeah. not, right? You've got to go to your day job the next day. You do not want to get a concussion. And like you said, it doesn't, nothing you have and nothing anyone has prevents concussions. You can reduce the possibility of them 
And obviously $60 will reduce the possibility of concussions, the ability to get back out there, not miss a game. If you miss a game, you pretty much, that's the cost. That's your return on investment. When you lost a game, if you bought had, had bought a skull cap, you would have been able to get back out there. So I really like what you're doing. I'm, you know, everyone knows that I'm always preachy about uh, get as much protection as you possibly can, which gets me really super excited about, I know Tommy's starting to crack the whip. Like it was, okay, it was time to start talking about the, the cobalt chest protector, uh, which I think, uh, you know, at least, uh, you know, look at, oh, that, what, I, you know, so, uh, you know, I think you've done a great job of explaining the head. Now it's time to move down the chest. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and if anything, I can even talk longer about head stuff. I mean, that's a lot of what we think about. And, and, but I think let's, let's nip it there because again, I'll just keep going and going and going and whatnot. I'll, I'll get you the, if we out, have time at the, if we have yeah. time at the end stand, you can actually get the whiteboard out and go through some stuff too. Perfect. perfect. That's okay. right. So yeah, so let's move on. So, so the, the, the coolest part of the cobalt line is, is the new cobalt chest protector. And, um, you know, the really design goals here were, you know, how do we go low profile? How do we still provide protection? I'm going to be honest. Uh, I don't know if I should say this, but we're kind of going after that unicorn of the Riddell power. You know, whenever you talk to, to, to officials and like, hey, what, if you could have the ideal chest protector, what would it be? Everyone's like, oh, the Riddell power. And, and as we started digging this, I always found it fascinating that very few people have even touched a Riddell power. You know, those who have them, you know, hoard them and don't let other people see them or touch them, they will never sell them. Um, but there's just, it's just this mythical being, you know, there's this, this unicorn, you know. So um, that's where very lofty goal, you know, um, and I hope that we've achieved it, but only time will tell after people, um, you know, basically, you know, start, start wearing this in the field and getting some more feedback. So, um, so let, let's start talking about this. So we're gonna start from, from the inside out. So on the inside, what we have here is, is air management pads. And by air management, that's a term that we use in our football product line. So when we're building football shoulder pads for, you know, you know, for linemen and what have you, we have, have these uh, air management pads that are a fancy way of saying they're air bladders. So we, we coat the fabric with a, with a special coating that um, kind of resists the airflow. So it's, it's um, not just a super easy pillow to, to puff. It just, it's just some resistance. So there's you know, more force dispersion when you hit these air, air bags. And what I love about them, this is something we did in our old system seven line is that all the padding is removable. What this means is that you can wash it very easily. So after you know, a, a weekend of tournaments, throw in the washing machine, line dry and they're brand new. It also means if you have multiple plate sessions in a day and you're getting super sweaty, you can swap these out to you know get get new pads. Uh, they're nice and dry. But that said, they 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 they, they sponge off super easy. Um, we're also try trying to provide a lot of airflow. So you can see we have these two air channels that come down right through the sternum area, open area sort of down by the belly, just let more air, air circulate. And if the angle's right, you can see that the padding is not flat. This is kind of waffle pattern. It's it's an egg crate foam as we call it. And the reason we do that is that we don't want every part of the pad touching your body. That would just kind of suffocate you, just, just, you know, just feel hot. But by having these, these different you know, waffle patterns, you get some more loft, you get more airflow. So they, not everything is in contact with you all the time. So you just have more breathability. Uh, then, uh, and also just this whole sternum channel comes up too. So like, if you want, you can maybe compromise or I don't say compromise, but maybe reduce the protective qualities a little bit, have a little bit more airflow. So a lot of, a lot of customization here. Um, you can kind of, you know, flare the pads in or out because they're held in place uh, by Velcro. So a really nice modular design. Everything is, is attached to a four millimeter thick, very, very dense EVA uh, padding as well. So you've got, you know, the air, air bladder pads, another layer of padding, and then you have the four millimeter thick HDPE plates. And one thing you can probably see from, from the backside is that they, they come, uh, it doesn't come on the camera as well, but it's pre-curved. So out of the box, there's a bit of shape to it. So it fits the body really, really well. We have different break points here. And in between the different break points, we've got this, this um, kind of rubber coated nylon webbing. So very, very durable, but you get a lot of good flex. So this can really fit a lot of body shapes. And the, the padding, you know, even, I, I think Tom, you call this the pit pad, you know, that, that's, that's held in place. You can move it up or down or completely remove it. Like I take it off the right-hand side just to make it easier uh, for me for throwing. Uh, this has a hard plate in it as well. So we didn't skimp, skimp here. We really want full protection. 
uh, we, we cover some of the gaps up here, but in a minute you'll see that we can remove that to be even more low profile. And if I get the angle right here, you can see that the shoulders are, are pre-curved. And this is really meant so that when, when you're wearing the chest protector, it's hanging on your shoulders. Like the, the chest protector itself is hanging on your shoulders. You're not solely relying on the harness to keep it in place. So this just takes a lot of weight off the strap system to keep the chest protector in the right place to, to protect you. And then when I pop this guy on, I'm gonna move this up a little bit here so I can stand up. Um, so, and let's get the camera up a little bit higher. So um, one of the things that we thought about when, when, you, when you put on uh, the chest protectors you know, from you know, other models, ours included, is that I was struggling to reach the strap on the side and get everything buckled in. And so what we did here is something somewhat simple is that we have this high risk clip on a piece of webbing that can come out kind of almost straight off the chest protector. Very easy to grab with one, one hand in the front. You can reach around with the other hand to grab the strap, plug them in, let go, and it slides back into place. So um, that means that we get the clips out of harm's way for, for you know, the most common shots aren't gonna end up you know, hitting that buckle. Early on, I'll be honest, we, we, were, we thought we were really smart because we had this super like burly nylon reinforced you know, clip and we had it out here. Uh, only problem is that when we brought it there and shot it with, with some balls, even the super resilient plastic just shattered into a million pieces. Um, so anyway, so as you can see, um, very, very nice conforming fit. Uh, in fact, if you go to umpatire.com slash cobalt, you'll see uh, some photos of Ty wearing it. And from the side, he looks super slim and trim. Um, so again, we're, again, low profile is, is the name of the game. Up here, you can see they're, they're, they're sitting pretty, pretty low on my shoulders. Maybe Jim, you can, you, we can cut away to, to you for a second because you, on yours, you've removed these because these, these um, extra caps that cover the gap come off very easily. So, yeah, and I'll tell you what, that's one of the really great things about the chest protector and it's one of the trends in umpire chest protectors these days where you have this ability to jigsaw lots of things together. You already mentioned you can take, you can take um, the sides out, right? I can, I'm going to go ahead and done that, right? You can also remove the shoulder plates. So you can see that I've removed the shoulder plates here. So that makes it even less, less bulky in the shoulders, should you want that, right? And I think that's something that we think about when we think about trying to fit something for all chest protectors. Some are larger guys that need larger chest protectors. Some are smaller that need smaller. But also some people are want more protection and some people want less protection. So not only is this chest protector uh, designed to fit all body types, it's also designed to fit all protection types, right? You already mentioned in the back where you can take this out if you wanted to, if you've got more air or not. One thing that when you and I were working on the development of this, this was smaller, the back pad was smaller. And I said, I would like, I know we've got some guys who've had a lot of times guys call in, they've had uh, heart surgeries and they want as much protection as possible in this area. And so uh, you doubled up the size of this, one of the changes off the prototype. And I appreciate you doing that, but you still left still channels in there, the bilateral channels there. And then also, again, if someone wants less, you can take it out or you can move it around. So really like that. But you can really see um, how low profile this is. The extension has been removed here. Right, so you see the extension of the one Stan has. Yeah, we got, this is like an extra three and a half inches down here. here. And so, so it looks like a, if you put them side by side, they look like different chest protectors. So I'm gonna share my screen and show you a few pics of, the, of that worn uh, by our Ty Unthink. And let's see how easy I can find this here. Give me just a second. Ah, there we go. Okay, so so as Stan mentioned, when you go to ump-attire.com slash cobalt, or you go to our website, and you go to the home page, and you scroll all the way down, you see the cobalt here. So everything that we're talking about tonight is on this page. And uh, so you can see that here. So here's a picture of Ty. And um, in this picture here, he's wearing the full extension and the full shoulder plates. And in this picture, He's, he's not. The shoulder plates are gone and the extension is gone. So, and then with you, this is the picture you like so much. Let me get over there. Um, oh yeah, this. Right? 
That one's great. This is not just a shirt picture. He is wearing the All-Star Cobalt underneath his shirt. And so, uh, yeah, I really love this. Again, this is this is what the, the chest tractor looks like with the shoulder caps and the extension. And this is what it looks like without. And so you get those options. And so sometimes for some people, more is more and sometimes less is more. So we're, we're glad that we were able to get these in early. Thank you, Stan, for sending these to us so we can get pictures yeah. up of the final product and not just the prototype. And we really appreciate that. And I tell you, we, 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 people love, are going to love this product. And I know people are tuning in now. I think there's a lot of people on the call and um, at, you know, this, this is a great product and I would like for you to keep talking about it because it's yeah. uh, you've put a lot of thought into it. You and I worked a lot on this. Uh, you know, you can feel free to share a little bit about some of the development, you know, aspects um, about how we were involved um, uh, with helping you here. And, and hopefully we're, we were of, yeah. of at least some help and, uh, your your just your head and then our um, uh, having so many customers that we listen to uh, we don't always learn just because we know we learn from our customers and we're happy to share that back out and be that connection between our large customer base including minor league baseball many college conferences and on down and then share that with you and let you do these uh, things. you and your team are, are phenomenal because a, a core you know part of our philosophy or culture is like we just don't believe we know everything. You know, we just ask a lot of questions. Um, you know, we listen more than we talk. And um, so just the insight that your team gave us from all of the feedback you guys gather, and then also to swing over to Matt too. Like Matt like has a great network, of a lot of amateur umpires that he trains and knows. He was able to get some some early prototypes out to them. And um, and, and that was some great insight too. It was like, Matt, maybe you want to spend a little bit of time talking about like the fit, because you had a yeah. variety of guys trying it out. So we, I sent, uh, <laughs> racked up quite a UPS bill sending these things across the country, but we've had, we, I sent it to specifically to people that I knew had very different body types. So I sent it to a guy, uh, Trevor, who's, who's, you know, six, six and like 180 pounds. And we sent it to guys that were, um, you know, we sent it to some people that were, you know, 300 pounds. And it fit, we sent them to some female umpires, um, everything in between, and it fit all of them. Um, the things that they really said was, you know, A, how light it was and how well it fit. And these are people who are drastically different um, in what their, their, their body types are. Um, so if it fit all of them, um, then that's the really, uh, really important um, piece to, to the development of the cobalt and it really speaks to you know who can wear this 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 product yeah, absolutely we, we didn't want to have a model that required let me maybe two or three different sizes we want something that just could kind of come out of the box and just get shaped in the right right ways for everyone it's it's little details too like you know one thing that that i struggle with i, I have a pretty narrow neck but in some of the models our, our own our own System Seven included the past generation, just a too tight in the neck. You know? and so what we have here with that that coated webbing is you have a lot of back and forth here um, with with the neck opening. So it can really accommodate a lot of different different shapes. Again, back to the, the curved shoulders that really kind of hang on the body. All the plastic we're using, this high density polyethylene, is a special variety and has a bit of shape memory to it. So you can you you can you can sit here and I it's not showing up on the camera too well, but you can take this this shoulder arch, kind of flex it. And, and you'll get a tighter bend to, to maybe fit, you know, someone like me who's got like a, a much more narrow shoulder. You can flare it out. So you have a lot of points of adjustment. You know, you hear about people taking up heat guns to, to, to melt or kind of, you know, shape plastic. Really, if, if after you shape this a bit kind of with your hands, it's going to have retained some of that memory. So um, we're, we're trying to make it a little bit easier for everyone to just out of the box very quickly build it to how they want through the modular design, uh, through, you know, taking off these, these components. Another little thing is that the shoulder caps can move out a little bit wider. Um, there's two points of adjustment for width as well. Um, the last thing I'll, I'll point out too is that um, we have the original Delta Flex harness. Um, this is something that we created many years ago where we took, um, again, that neoprene material that we like on the face mask harness, but this time we coated both sides with fabric so you don't want grip on, on the backside of our chest vector harness. Um, but a lot of breathability, a lot of great stretch. And it really conforms well. And this, this four-point harness system 
we've just found over the years works really, really great in terms of, of holding chest protectors on the body as designed. Because the, the last thing we want is, is a chest protector to be drooping down like this. And then, then all of your collarbone are exposed and you can start getting some gaps between your face mask um, and, and your chest protector, even if you have a throat guard, you know, there's just different angles where the ball can come in. So we really want this to fit in a really nice snug fashion so that, that everyone is, is protected. Again, no matter, you know, kind of how, how big, uh, you know, their shoulders or their neck is, we, we hope that this, this really fits in a great, great way and it makes everyone feel protected and actually does protect them um, behind the plate. When Stan, when I uh, was trying it on, just to speak to that moldability piece that you're talking about, um, when I put it on the first time, you know, it felt like a new chest protector. Um, wore it around for, you know, five minutes or whatever, took it off, put it on 10 minutes later. It was like it was already molded to me. It was, it was perfect. Um, just with that little bit of wear time and, you know, the little bit of body heat that was coming off wearing it, it molds right to your body. And that's something I've, I've never seen in any other chest protector that I've, I've ever worn. That's great. That's cool. I think that's, that's, oh, well, one thing about the weight is that you, you point out, Matt, that it's pretty lightweight. This, this weighs in like just a tad over three and a half pounds. So, so it's definitely not like a lead vest. I mean, it's, it's, you put it on, once you have everything adjusted, it, it's almost seamless. And, and that's, that's kind of one of our goals, like with, with all the gear we design, whether it's for umpires, whether it's for catchers, is, is how do we make products protect, but feel like you're wearing a t-shirt or feel like you're wearing nothing, you know, um, that's just the ultimate, you know, just to, just to make it all disappear so that you can just stay focused solely on the game, have, have no lack of confidence because you've, you're worried about a gap anywhere. We just want you just to just be able to focus on the game. And this again goes back to what I said earlier about, you know, talking with people saying, you know, what, what, what do you like about our product, but what don't you like? This, the example I use a lot is like the straps and a leg guard. Like if they're bugging you, you might think they're just like a tiny little piece, but we want to hear about it. Like, cause if, if there's a way we can improve it, we want to improve it because that could be the one thing that just takes your mind off of, um, you know, the game for just that split second. And that once you're distracted, that can open up all kinds of issues, not just how you're officiating the game, but also safety, you know, and, and you might, that might be the one time that you just get dinged, you know, so great stuff. Um, any other thoughts guys? Yeah, they're asking in the chat if you could show the harness again. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, let's see, I'll try to do it this way so that it's not uh, black on black. So, um, so yeah, so then it you know, wraps around, and sorry, what part of the harness too? Like the, the rear part or the, where, it, where it attaches? They just Maybe said the harness. Know. Yeah, they just said the harness, but uh, yeah. if you could show, the, show the attachments again, that'd be great. Yeah, so, um, so again, I'll do it not wearing it this time. So, so um, on the front, we, we have the, the side release buckle on its own piece of webbing so that it wraps around to the side. And, and that's important to note too. You couldn't really see it when I was wearing it, but where this lies, it's, it's lying on, on padding. So if you take the, an errant you know, foul tip that, that hits you know, most likely a grazing angle, you're not getting a clip right into your rib cage. If the clip is lying on a layer of protection, you know, basically the EVA base padding, but also the air management pad as well. So you're very well protected. Um, we, we do have some loops here too. Um, you know, some people find that they, they need to loop, you know, pass through the loops just to kind of keep it a little bit tighter from riding up. Other people like myself just just go right over the top. It seems seems fine. Um, so so that's that. Um, again, side release buckle where it comes in, and, and and we we you know we looked at all kinds of things. You know, metal clasps like we use on catcher's gear. We still like the side release buckles. Just they're just a lot easier to pop off. You know, when you're kind of in between games and want to cool off for a bit, um, go back to the truck. You know, get some hydration. Um, you know, if you got, uh, you know, an hour to kill, just want just some, some to pop off, you know, easily. Um, it just, especially like when you're reaching on the side here where we have it, just, just you pop and it just, just flies off. Um, we have, you know, uh, basically these ladder locks here. So you do have a lot of uh, adjustment. I mentioned how this is a neoprene stretching material. I didn't mention that this is also elastic on, on the waist as well. And again, that just helps with, with your movement as you're moving around to have that, have that extra stretch. Where we don't put stretches up up in the the top portion of the harness. Um, so up on the shoulders, we have a static nylon webbing. We find that just over the years playing with different configurations, having no stretch up on top 
again, helps keep the chest protector located where it should be. Whereas again, having stretch on the sides helps as you're moving around, uh, running around, it just helps keep everything centered uh, appropriately. Great stuff. And All right, I, think, I think we're probably yeah. ready, unless we have anything else to cover on this one, I think we're probably ready to look at the uh, CPU 26, if you want to look at that. Yeah. So, so this is um, this is what we're calling the internal, internal plate chest protector. This is if you're not officiating at the higher level, if you're a little more price sensitive, this is a great product for you. Um, has a lot of protection, like it, it looks like it's a soft shell, but it's really a hard shell. So that four millimeter HDPE plate I was talking about on the cobalt is buried inside of here. We, you have plastic plates to the sternum, up on the outside, up down here, up through the collarbone region, even in, in, the, in the throat guard, you've got plastic embedded to help again, disperse that, that, that blow to a larger area to have more of the foam absorb that energy. So um, extremely lightweight. So I was mentioning the cobalt was, was really lightweight at three and a half pounds. This is a pound and a half. Um, even though it's super light, it's, you're, you're not skimping on protection. It's, it's, it's a solid piece of equipment. You get a lot of airflow, a lot of perforations all, all throughout. Uh, you have you know, some of the, the pit pads here and the shoulder caps. Um, so it, it's, it's a great piece. Um, we, oh, the other thing is, even though this is a more of a, a lower price point, we still felt so strongly about the original Delta Flex harness that we incorporated here. We tried doing, you know, again, I don't say like dumbed it down, but we tried doing some simpler designs. We just didn't like it because again, it, it, this, this really helps keep the chest vector located on, on the body as, as you really need it to. And when you pop it on, you have, it's, it's just a great form fitting design. The, the break points are designed you know, to wrap, wrap around, um, give you great protection and not get in your way. It's not too stiff. Uh, the, the hookups are on the side, just like the cobalt. It's a little bit harder to attach in the cobalt, but again, just, just a really nice form fitting design. One thing that I like to tout is the, the plastic again that we use uh, in these chest protectors has a bit of memory to it. So when you get your internal plate chest protector, it's gonna be pretty flat because it's you know, gonna ship flat most likely. But if you take the time to round and mold the shoulder cap, let me take the shoulder cap off so you can see it more clearly. The, this plastic plate that's up, up, up in the shoulder collarbone area will start to retain memory and start to stay curved. And this is something we've done for years for catchers. And it's just a great thing because once again, you're, you're getting the chest protector to curve and hang on the body. You're, you're less reliant on the, the harness system to keep it in place because the chest protector itself is hanging on the body. So this is a great fit story. It's better protection because it's, it's really covering the, the parts of the body that need to be protected and covered. And what we tell catchers to do, and this is no different for, for umpires, is, uh, is to basically, in your, in your bag, roll it up like a burrito, like this, and you can even stick in your leg guards. And what, what that will do is over time, it'll, it'll help maintain that curve in the collarbone area. So just, again, helping keep that fit, you know, not nice and custom. Uh, so it's just super comfortable. So that's the internal chest protector, the internal plate chest protector. Uh, Stan, uh, you know, again, it, it's such a great looking product. I love the sheen of that. It just has a nice satin look to it. Uh, I love how that hugs the body. I know our staff have have um, have taken pictures in that and tried that on. And we've sourced through our development. We're working with you guys. We also love that too. Definitely don't forget, this is also a great fast pitch umpire chest protector. A lot of the fast pitch umpires don't like the extra protection, don't need the hard shell. Softball isn't going to give, it's, it's going to be spread out a little bit more. The glossies yeah. are not as much. And so with what you, you know, and they also don't want a lot of bulk. Um, and, and, and so this with, with the moisture management system that you have built into this, this very well could be the next great fast pitch umpire chest protector. One, one thing I'm always forgetful about Jim, because we've done it for so long is we, we have built an antimicrobial into our foams and fabrics. And so, especially on, on a piece of equipment that's up against your body, in the blazing sun, humidity, you're sweating like crazy into this. It helps reduce the funk and the odor. And you know, you can throw this in, in you know in your bag, 
if you forget to take it out and air it out or forget to wash it, it, it doesn't get all mildewy or funky. It really helps reduce the odor, which is just a great value. And this thing can be machine washed. You know, we have lots of people that will take this into a home washing machine, put on a gentle cycle, just a little bit of detergent, wash it, you know, throw some towels in there. I, I recommend taking the harness off. Anything with Velcro, take the Velcro off because that could cause pilling, you know, such as you know the, the, the shoulder cap attachments. But then you just line dry it and it's like brand new. It's, it's really fantastic. So this is like a good value buy, but it's, it's something that's gonna last you know, for, for multiple years. Um, so just, just a great piece. So, and that's one thing that if anything, we're guilty of it also as we tend to overbuild things, you know, so that they last maybe too long, you know, but, um, but we want people to, to basically be happy with the product. And, and that's really been a winning strategy for decades is like, you know, even during the recession of, you know, 2008 and whatnot, we, we never had a down year. And I just think it's word of mouth. You know, people just love our product, tell other people about it. It's just a very, very steady uh, way to run a business. Um, just focusing on the product, just, just focus, focus, focus on the product. We're not relying on, on, you know, any kind of buzzwords or, you know, advertisements. It's just really just trying to build a good product that people are happy with. And then hopefully they tell their friends and it, and it keeps going from there. So cool. Hey, um, Stan, somebody asked how thick are the pads inside of that one? Yeah. Um, the plastic plates that is, sorry. Bigger the, plastic yeah, the, pl the plastic plates. Yeah. The plastic plates are, the, the plastic plates are four millimeters. And again, they're high density polyethylene. So it's it's not so much just the thickness, it's what is the actual material. And because um, we don't want things to buckle or you know pivot inward. Um, one thing I, I was just checking, because you know I'm, I'm a nerd and I've got calipers at my disposal, um, is I, I think the, the air management pads are three quarters of an inch, and which is a pretty important spec. Oops. And yep, 0.75 on the money. So, um, so yeah, so again, oh, and the, and the total thickness, I don't think we ever really talked about that, but if I take the calipers, you know, this, this is kind of a plus minus thing. I mean, it's, it's roughly basically an inch from, from the exterior shell to the, the innermost part of the padding, you know, if just kind of grabbing it, you know, right, right here in the meat. So again, very low profile. Um, just, just phenomenal. Fantastic. When, uh, when I got the, um, cobalt chest protector, the hard shell, I was obviously floored. Um, but when you sent me the CPU 26, um, I had never thought that I would be impressed by a pad with a chest protector without a hard shell on the outside. This thing is extremely impressive. Um, for a price, uh, for like Jim was saying for softball, for a, a new umpire who's going to be doing some, you know, lower level. The thing that really makes it stand out is just how adjustable it is compared to other price points. So like if this is one side of the chest protector with the shoulder guard, there's another. So you have that much, it's like oh, maybe an inch and a half, two inches of adjustability, same amount of adjustment down here on the, on the pit pads and not just in and out, but up and down. So you can really stick these things wherever you want. Um, it, it, I was very, I'm very impressed by this. As, as, as impressive as the cobalt is um, for a, a beginner's chest protector for a, um, you know, price point. I think Jim, you're, you're going to be pricing for a hundred bucks, right? Um, yeah. So they're, uh, you know, it, it's phenomenal. And I think it, you were saying earlier when we were discussing it, it kind of is an, an, outcropping from the work you're doing on the catcher's chest protectors with the new standards, right? Yeah, 100%. So like basically, um, you know, doing the development for the Noxy chest protectors, uh, there's, th this is a direct takeaway. Th this silhouette, this is what we're using on our, our baseball chest protectors that meet the Noxy standard. It's the same four millimeter thick HCPE plate inside. Um, so, uh, so, uh, so yes, <laughs> thanks Tommy. Um, so yeah, it, it's in, in, in the fit, like it's for, I don't say for how simple it is, you know, cause compared to the cobalt, this is pretty simple, but it just fits so great. Like it just wraps the body. Like you just got to try it to believe it. So it's, it's fantastic. Tommy, do we have a, a couple minutes to talk oh, about? You, get, you got all the time you, you got all the time you want. I just wanted to get us moving along. Cause we still got a couple more products to cover and we're about an hour and 20 minutes in. So I just want to make sure you got time. Cause these, uh, this next product is really, really great too, as well as all of them have been, but this is great. So I'm going to go ahead and get my video. Um, 
this is like one of those reality shows that 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 you know you you like your your hour watching it and then you're like oh I, I want more I want it to keep going and I, I'm sure people are really into because this is so you know this is so unusual this is that that you as a manufacturer not not only you know um, uh, not only did you come out with one chest factor you came out with two and I think you listened very well to the the fact that not everyone wants the same. Uh, the same thing, you know, and, the, and, and baseball umpires are different than softball umpires. But not only not only are you doing the work and you're putting the work in, and the community definitely appreciates the efforts that you have done and you, your team. I know it's not all you, right? You didn't make no. those and make all that, right? No. Uh, right? I know you. No one knew you may have done some of them, but uh, uh, but now we appreciate you having us on and, and in your lab and and showing us the ins and out directly right from. Uh, from the manufacturer so yeah, it, so, it's, yeah. It's, we, we've never done anything like this before jim so thank right. you guys um and it's you know, we're pretty quiet you know we don't i mean sure right. instagram and twitter and things yeah. like that but like we don't really open up like this and so hopefully people are getting a kick out of just seeing the lab and and i think someone even suggested in the comments that you know maybe we have like another episode where we just do you know testing with air cannon on face masks which i think would be really fun oh yeah. actually yeah. want to talk to you about that because yeah. i would love to do a couple of shows with you on some of the air cannon testing and stuff oh, like yeah that. we've got to oh. do it just a, just an air the way we'll call it like the air cannon show i mean and that, just be that alone yeah. and we could shoot the air cannons at like all kinds of things i mean watermelons you know we can have no. people suggest <laughs> things but you know i've got to give matt some a lot of kudos too matt's the one that spearheaded this call right and so uh, he reached out to me. I know you and him talk on a regular basis, and um, and, and I thought it was a great idea. And uh, and of course, as soon as uh, we got Tommy involved, um, it, it's not so easy to produce these shows, uh, especially when you're also on and talking. And and so Tommy makes sure everything works on the on the on the back end, and we really appreciate him uh, doing that. But uh, but Matt, you know, Matt was the one that gave the idea. And it, I tell you what, you and I, we've had several different calls on this. On we've had. There's been the development part, but there's been the development of this call, right? And so I recall maybe even five, six weeks ago, where Matt, um, yourself, and 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 myself just had a call to talk, to just brainstorm potential things on this call of what it might look like, and we got really excited. I mean, you know, you could tell we were all really excited about it. And then then we had a pre-call last week and ran through everything with Tommy, and I know we've all been excited this week. And, and so, um, again, thanks, thanks to all you guys, not only you, Stan, but also Matt for, for your leadership and, and, and spearheading this and Tommy and being able to make sure all that, that people were actually able to see this. Great team effort, guys. Yes. Thank you, Jim, for uh, putting, putting up a tire behind this whole thing. Love it. So Stan, you got, you want to finish up? You've got a couple more products yeah. you want to go with and we'll, we'll, we'll just, turn off and let you get back on the main stage. And sure. We'll just, we'll just wrap up with one last, uh, back in the wings. We, we kind of started, you know, with the head, you know, face mask, you know, the skull cap, two chest protectors. Now um, let's, let's finish off with the leg guard. And so this is our, our cobalt leg guard. And, you know, in terms of the design, I'm going to be honest, I think this is a, a, a not as quite of a product as our past system seven leg guards. But again, we're listening, you know, what's the need? And I think our old system seven leg guards were overbuilt. There was just way too much padding. They're too bulky, maybe a bit too hot, uh, just too much. And so the focus of, of this leg guard was again, very, very sleek, low profile. We, we want this to look like you're wearing nothing on your, on your pants. Um, it wants to be extremely lightweight and very, very breathable. And that's what this is. So in some ways, I feel like it's a, it's a, you know, kind of a stripped down version of our older leg guards, but we're really trying to meet the needs of what the officials need. Um, so again, this, this plastic is just like the other plastic I was telling you where, you know, out of the box, it's got a unique shape, but if you need it a little bit tighter or a little bit broader, you can, you can flex it and it has a bit of memory to it. So here I'm just kind of rolling it up. And you can see it's a little bit more curved. It's hard to show on the camera exactly. So again, you, you can get, get a more of a custom fit with these leg guards without taking out the, a heat gun or anything like that. This plastic is super low profile. I mean, it's, you have to have a tube, you know, a, a cylinder basically be any more low profile than this. So, you know, we don't want anything kind of showing out through the pants. We're, we're covering up the gaps here. We got knee protection, big perforations through, throughout for breathability. We, we went with, with just the simple straps, just keep the lightweight, you know, light, uh, keep it lightweight. And right now, basically each leg is weighing in at basically a pound. So a pound on each leg. It's like I said earlier, I want things to feel like you're wearing a t-shirt, almost like you're wearing nothing. So once you strap these on your legs, like 
a pound is really nothing. Um, they just, they're just super, um, you know, you know, low profile, form fitting, lightweight, they're, they're almost invisible. So that kind of rounds out the product offering. You know, I'm always so eager to jump in and, 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 and fill in some gaps on things. And what's, you know, can you share the, can you show the back end? Well, I've got one here, but you, yeah. you know, they'll let you turn it around and show just how already, how, how much curvature that there oh, is yeah. in that. Right. And so, totally. you know, as umpires, we talk about low profile <clears throat> a lot in the chest protector, right? So we want, just like the picture we showed earlier, Todd, from the side view, it almost didn't look like it was wearing anything at all. But also what we don't want as umpires is to have something that's so bulky that it makes your legs look, you know, you know terribly bulky as well. And so this is, this is a low profile shin guard. And one of the things I know that you took away from our meeting that we had, when was it that we first met on this? When did, when did you come August, down last year? Well, well, I think we we're talking prior to this, but we came down in August of 2019. So a little like August, yeah, August the, very so much a year ago. Year, that's a year. Hey, this is I think it was a year today. Happy anniversary! Yeah. There you go. Happy anniversary, Stan, of, of the visit to umpatara.com and the headquarters. We appreciate you bringing your team down. But one thing that we talked about was that just less is more. You know, umpires want they don't want a lot of bulk, and that and that's all over. And then also in the shin guards, right? So I know someone like you, you want to build and add, and and next thing you know, it's a it's it could end up being a you know, a, a machine uh, type piece that goes on there, but you listen and go, how can we design something that is less, but still provides that more, still provides that protection and gives you what you need um, all in one. So some people might look at this shin, at shin guard and go, well, there's just not much to it. But I think that's the beauty of the design of it. There is not much to it, but of what is there, you've got the great management padding, you've got the moldable um, uh, uh, plastic, and then, and then that also is great memory there, and it's low profile. It's everything you need in a shin guard, or everything you don't need in a shin guard. It's all in that. And so, uh, Matt, you, I, I see your chime. You want to touch chime in too, on on your feelings on the shin guard. Yeah, the, the it just AB compares comparing them to what I wear now. I see all the same protections. I don't see any gaps, and maybe half the weight. Um, you know, and guys who may be flying the games, um, you know, that weight, what's going in the, the check baggage is, um, you know, that's important. Um, you know, any way that you can shave down weight on the field is, is going to be good. Um, they're so light. Um, I wish I had gotten a chance to, uh, to wear them on the field, but, uh, pandemics had a way of getting in the way of that. But, um, you know, very excited to, to be, putting all of these things onto, uh, into use on the field and, and seeing how it can really change the way that I umpire. Um, going to a lot, a lot slimmer profile, a lot less weight, um, you know, all those things, it's gonna help me get up to third base uh, when I'm rotating. It's gonna help me get that to maybe another step um, on a fly ball that helps me see something that I, that I want to see. So, um, you know, I really appreciate all the work that you put into cutting weight in the places where you can cutting profile in the places where you can, but never sacrificing that, um, that protection. Yeah. I'm excited about the cobalt line, Stan, um, and Matt, you, you know, it's the, it's the updated umpire gear line since the system seven came out. And I know that you, um, made made improvements in that in the in the marketplace with those innovations at that time, but then you also learn some things, right? So uh, sometimes there's only so much learning you can do in a lab and 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 talking with your your retailers and customers. And sometimes you when you especially when you try something new, you know you, it's hard to know exactly what it's going to be like when you get it in in on the field. And that's why I like all the testing that Matt was responsible for. I know you and I spent a lot of time talking about. The line, especially the chest protector. I, I can't really take any credit for the skull cap. That was all you guys in Major League Baseball there. Um, but Matt did a great job of getting this on umpires at all levels. And um, and and so, and that really allowed them to give feedback. And I know when you're in development on something, there, there's always this process, right? So you get your things on paper, you get your things in design, you get your things in CAD, and then you make a prototype. Okay. And so you were able to get the prototype 
uh, with with Matt and all and his umpires. Matt, how many umpires did you uh, test this with? You're, are you muted? Carry the one. No, he's thinking. Yeah, oh, he's so thinking. you I, can't I, hear him. He's I, over I, there tapping his your, foot on the that ground. That was your thinking noise. That was my thinking noise. I had to count past four, so you know I had to okay. take the socks off. So they had four, um, but they, but there was extensive testing. It wasn't just you gave it to him one time and they used it one game and then they no, said that you liked well, it, right? That was we did, we did a little bit of both. We, uh, yeah. you know, I, I gave it, handed it around to people that I that I trust here that I work with, got their just basic ideas, and we um, Stan was very generous and had some samples sent out to a few people. I think all in all, we had about mm, seven or eight guys um, trying it out at different. Uh, different levels and uh, guys, I should say, men and women, um, took a look at it. Um, and a lot of things, there were several major things that, that changed. Um, the placement of the buckle um, was one thing, and I got to give Stan a lot of credit for that. He heard, um, you know, what we, the feedback that we gave and, and was able to communicate with the factory and make the changes before they were produced. Um, the, uh, prototypes that you sent me had a, a completely different, um, padding system. Um, and you know, the original padding system was like, yeah, I, I like it. It's a good padding system. You sent me the air bladder and I was like, no, this, this is it. Right. Um, this is it. So, um, it, it was, it was fantastic. Um, you know, you're very, very responsive. Um, to those things and you know I, there are things that you know in version 2.0 you know that we may you know continue to evolve evolve the cobalt well, yeah I, I, I think that was great too Stan the fact that you were so receptive and um, wanting to make changes throughout the process I recall well, you sent me some pictures back in the early part of the year with just some before anything got to any factory and you allowed us to give you that feedback and and, and I'm like you, I, don't, I, I realize I don't know everything. And I, and I, so because of that, I tend to know more because I'll ask and try to get the, you know, more knowledge. And, you know, I've got staff with about 45 years of, of um, officiating and, and umpire experience and, and at all different levels. And, and we're very thankful that you allowed us to, to, to provide that input. And, uh, and that you did change on the fly when, when you, when you brought a prototype, when, when, when we saw the prototype and, 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 um, you know, a few months, a few months ago. And then uh, you took the additional suggestions, not only from myself, but from Matt. And, um, and then you made the changes. And, you know, like Matt said, the biggest change was the, was the, was the padding in the back. The prototype did not have that. And there was nothing bad about that, that prototype at all. And with the padding, it wasn't, but like, I'm, I'm like you, Matt, when, when, when you shared with me, um, we had a Zoom call and then your rep was also down. So we were doing that Zoom call and uh, with the staff and, and, and yourself and, and we had the two there and you said, well, what, you know, I want, I want to know what you think, you know, it's probably going to be more expensive to go to the, to this air management system. And we were like, we don't care. I mean, it does, this is, you've got to go with this. I mean, this just had like Matt saying, look, you just had to. And, um, and so, so we're really glad you made that change and also the changes with the channel and, you know, and the, and the, the buckles and moving those buckles and also, you know, the, uh, oh, you know, one thing we didn't mention is where, where the buckles are, um, and where the loop for the buckles are is as long as you have your harness on, it's going to help that wrap yeah. in that area, mm -hmm. you know? And so, um, I really encourage the people to, to use that loop for that. So, um, but you know, that's the process through, you know, one goes through this prototype and then there's, uh, and then there's another, like, like Matt said, version two, and then that you, uh, uh, then, then you take it. And I think what your near next step was. Um, you went through production, you started making these and you pulled the first two off the line after all the changes and had them air shift in. Uh, you had one, you sent me one. And I was very excited when that came in, when you told me this just came off the line and you should have this uh, within a couple of days. And, and I was very excited and we were excited and you nailed it. And, um, and so, so really great job. Tell, tell us a little bit where the name Cobalt came from. <laughs> Why the name Cobalt? So, so we, um, so we have to give credit to Jim. Yeah, we always give credit where credit is due. Um, we, we, again, we're, we're, we're thinking about not just the product itself, but the branding. Because one thing that we suffer here at All Stars, we are a bunch of geeky engineers, product guys. We, we work on this widget, and then, and then when it's done, 
oh, let's let's work on 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 this this new widget, you know. And we 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 never continue telling the story like we're doing tonight. Like we we never really tell like what went into the product, why it's so great. We kind of just put the product out there and just let it speak for itself. And so trying to to maybe grow in some maturity here, you know, like we're trying to think more about the branding. And so we're like, this is not just a chest protector. It's a, a helmet that's going to pair with the magnesium mask. It's a whole new chest protector, a whole new leg. It's a whole line. It needs to be something more than just a model number. We need a name for it. And so we're pitching around some names and we're also thinking, could we do a color pop? You know, like maybe like some sort of blue color. Um, and so, in, and again, another back and forth with, with you, Jim, just like the product, talking about the nitty gritty details of the product, we're kind of spitballing ideas about branding and naming. And you said, yeah, blue, that's, yeah, let's, how about cobalt? Cobalt's a cool blue name color, like cobalt. And boom, it just, we're like, that's it, cobalt, done. So, uh, so thank you, Jim. It was, it was, well, okay, so, that, so it was that easy because the way that you made it to me that you were going to have to present it to your team and talk to your marketing people and then you're going to get back to me with the idea and and so uh so so it was even quicker quicker that huh? okay. well i well okay i was sold initially but yes i did run it by by ross right, right. Who's, who's our you know graphic right. designer my yeah. brother and, and, well, what, and what i brother. like about cobalt when you do research on what cobalt is you know, it's actually a a metal that's hard to that's indestructible, right? Yeah. It's a or it's a it's a material mineral. You know, it's all kinds of things, right? That's indestructible. And I know you all were really wanting very hard, I, and I wouldn't have thought of that had not you all said we want to attach it to something blue because the blue, you know, blue is a traditional name. Not everyone likes to be called blue. We understand that, but you know, blue is a, is a traditional uh, umpire color, and so we didn't want to call it uh, necessarily blue zone or or something that was kind of generic. And, and when you told me that you wanted a color to pop on, let's say the chest protector, and the more I got to thinking about that, the more I thought we've got to find a blue color that also has a connotation that there is a uh, defensive uh, uh, defender, uh, you know, shieldy, something that, that does that. And I just kind of did some, some Googling, looking around and thinking, and, and, and when, it, when Cobalt hit me, I, I think I emailed you at like 1 a.m. in the morning and you got that point, like, I, like saying, you've got to do Cobalt, you got to do Cobalt. And, uh, and so when, when you said, well, I'll take it to my team. And I thought, they're not going to do it. They're going to go, <laughs> they're not going to do it. No one's, no one's going to, no one at All-Star is going to listen to me and, tell, and actually, uh, you know, use that name. And so I was, I was pretty excited. I went around bragging to every, I'm not, a, people know me, I don't brag a lot. I went around bragging to everybody that I could find it. All-Star is going to name the Cobalt. That was my idea. So, so yeah, I had to ask that question. I appreciate you answering it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And everything's a process. And, and maybe one thing to, to, to some, 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 this whole conversation up is that it's feedback, right? Like that's kind of the roots of our company. It's what we still do today. It could be the product, could be the branding. It's, it's all about getting that feedback and just trying to get it all swirl together. And then hopefully something magical happens. So, um, so I don't know, I, I can't thank Matt, you know, Jim, you guys enough for all the product feedback, Tommy, Thank you for getting this amazing, you know, technological show on, on the road here. Um, and so, so there's, there's one more thing I want to do while we're here. And that is if you have a minute tonight after we're done, go out to um, your browser and go to www.umpatire.com slash cobalt. And what it'll do is take you to a web page. It has all the products we spoke about tonight and give you a chance to kind of take a look at uh, some of them more in depth. There's two products we didn't cover tonight. I will have you stay and talk real quick about the cryo helmet because yeah. that's not an in-game use piece of equipment, right. but I really think that every mm -hmm. locker room in the country should have one of these available. And yeah. after Stan tells you why, you'll understand. Well, 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 thanks, Tommy. And actually that's a perfect segue because uh, starting two, two years ago, all of, oh, thanks, Matt. Look, we, we got a demo here. <laughs> is um, starting to, well, the, first the cryo helmet, what is it? It's, it's cold packs for your head and neck. And there's a body of research that showed that if you cool the skull and particularly the carotid arteries, you can reduce the brain's temperature by just a few degrees, just a small amount. But by reducing the brain's temperature a small amount, some really wonderful things happen, particularly after you have a TBI, uh, uh, such as a concussion. One thing that you hear about in the, in the medical literature is the metabolic mismatch. You get an impact to your head, your brain cells for some reason get the signal to speed up and they speed up, they go crazy, but you're not increasing your blood flow. So I'm a mechanical engineer, not a biologist uh, or a biochemist, but 
the way I describe it is that they're getting the signal to speed up. They're not getting the support they need to have that increased activity. So your brain cells basically die. They burn out. That's bad, obviously. And it's a whole cascade effect, a whole domino effect, something called inflammatory cascade. Um, your blood brain barrier opens up when you have a TBI as well. The interesting thing is that when you apply a little bit of cooling, those things get reversed. Your blood brain barrier kind of tightens back up. Um, your, the metabolic mismatch gets more stabilized. Um, about a year ago, we had a study published out of New Zealand that looked at using the cryo helmet following a concussive event for college males and female college age males and females um large i think it's largely a lot of rugby players and they found that symptom resolution was huge um, basically your headaches um your uh your just general grogginess your insomnia those things all improved uh mm -hmm. by you know wearing the cry helmet so that was the first independent research that showed that we had already been hearing that for about six years from uh, doctors such as the, or actually, well, doctors, uh, uh, athletic trainers, physical therapists. Um, so I mentioned Dr. Robert Cantu down the street, you know, his team of physical therapists use the cryo helmet in their, in their uh, facilities um, for basically managing the recovery process following concussion. But also concussions aside, because th this could be a whole other episode that we could do sometime about it, concussions. It probably needs to be. Yeah. It really needs to be. And I think uh, we've already got two episodes, right? Episode two is the Canon. Yes, so air cannon show. We're going to shoot it at all kinds of things, and then the third, the next one is going to be post recovery. And I think it's also equally important. We spend a lot of time talking about prevention of of, of head injuries, but we don't spend yeah. a lot of time talking yeah. about how we can mitigate them. And it, to me, it's just as important because it's something that you can control. It's something you could do. You know, one thing you didn't mention is that the cryo helmet is in all uh, minor league baseball stadiums and all major league yes. baseball stadiums uh, so, in the umpire locker room. So, so something happens. Is, so, yeah. to so Tommy kind of kind of hit on it a little yeah. bit. Isn't it? Yeah, it, it's basically two years ago, right. every minor league locker room or um, official's locker room has to have a freezer for the cryo helmet. Right. Which is fantastic. Um, so, and, and, and we've, and yeah, again, I could go for another couple of hours talking about the cryo helmet. It's just amazing. So a few guys, I'll just jump in with one thing. A few of the minor league umpires that I um, talk with and work with, many of them have credited the cryo helmet with um, saving their career. Um, oh, one cool. of the, one of the things that I get to do up here is occasionally we'll fill in at the local AAA stadium. And one of the reasons I have to fill in a lot is because of concussions. Um, and whenever that's the reason I'm there, they're talking about it. They're talking about, well, I had to do my cryo helmet time and, and, um, they do really push it and, um, you know, make them use it. And when it first came out, it was kind of like, oh, cool. We can put our beers in here. Yes. Um, but very quickly, once people started using it, um, they, they love it. Um, I love it. It goes with me every, every time I work a game. Um, it's in my trunk. I did a test with it when it first came out where I was giving, going to, you know, introduce it to a group of umpires. Um, I took it out of my freezer, um, on a Saturday, drove two hours, went to the hotel, left it in the cooler overnight, um, presented it at 11 o'clock the next morning, still cold. Yeah, and, and again, not to get all geeky, but see this like lit up thing here, that's our heated head form that goes up to, to it's not 98.6, it's like 99 and, and a cha in change. But basically that's where we test the cold packs, um, just to make mm -hmm. sure we get this long duration right. of cooling that's take, like when you wear it, it lasts for at least an hour, typically an hour and a half. Which is phenomenal, and and even just you know aside from concussions, just heat management, you know heat stroke, and when I if I mean it's getting so hot, and you're just out right. under the blaring sun, even like between games, if you just throw it on, um, you know I mean one thing is you know up here in New England, you know the old adage in the winter is if your feet are cold, put on a hat because you have so much you know heat loss through your head. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the it's similar in that if you're really hot and you put a something cold on your head and your neck, you're helping kind of pull more, more heat out of your body as well. So um, just in terms of, you know, heat management, it's, it's a great tool. Um, quickly between innings, you can use the scarf, just kind of throw it on real quick. Um, then, you know, it comes in a cooler bag, so it can be behind you on the fence um, and, and stay frozen just as it stayed frozen for you, Matt, in, in the cooler bag as well. Well, you know, this, I want to sum up what, what this is, what the cryo helmet is. When people hear cryo helmet, it sounds like some apparatus that came out of some doctor's lab, right? It's, and I know you've got a lot engineered in it, but to me, it is an apparatus that uh, puts ice on your on your brain. It's puts ice on your brain on a bruise, right? So you're gonna if you yeah, I see lots of people this year getting wrist injuries, 
a leg, leg injuries. I see lots of bruises and people say, Hey, make sure you ice that, make sure you ice that. Well, a concussion is a bruise on your brain. When you get a concussion, it means something swollen up, something, uh, some blood vessels busted and you've got some blood in there. And just like you would ice, why would you want to ice your arm or ice your leg and not ice your brain when you get a concussion? You don't have to be that tough. It's the most important part of your body. And so it is a, it's a way to ice your brain when it gets a bruise. That's what it is. And I know it's expensive. It's not 10 bucks. It's not 20 bucks, but it fits. It's perfectly made. It's got all the right materials in it. Plus it's got that extra thing to where the blood will pass through um, or pass by the cooling areas that go into your brain, which will cool your brain internally, you know, and again, I've said it uh, lots of times you got the skull cap, 60 bucks that can save you a game, get your money back. If, if you if you can get to work the next day, uh, because you didn't get a concussion, there's money there back in your pocket. And then same thing with the crowd helmet, have it on hand. Uh, it's 80 bucks. Make the investment, make the investment in yourself. Surely you love yourself. I know we get enough grief or umpires get enough grief from fans and parents and things like that. Okay. So love yourself, right? If you're not gonna get love from everyone else, love yourself and have these things on hand, uh, and make that investment and, and ice your brain. That's the crowd helmet and the crowd scarf too. So Hey, what, Tommy, can I, can I go to the site really quick and just share a couple of little insights? Let me yep. drive. Uh, do that, and then we'll wrap up for the evening because uh, hearing about um, eight minutes, uh, Stan's going to get kicked out. That's true. Right. Our security yeah, guys are right. through and say, why are you still in the lab tonight? <laughs> well, it'll like, um, you know, all, everything is live now. You know, we were, we, were, we were really careful not getting anything uh, on the site until today. We got our uh, the cobalt skull caps came in on Monday, and we have got – all the sizes except the extra large. And Stan, thank you so much for sending me that what you did have. So we do have skull caps available for sale. They're available for right now. Uh, and all sizes extra large. If you bought one tonight, you would get them out. They would go out tomorrow. So we've also got the cobalts. Uh, chest protectors are coming. We have only 72 pieces. That's all we have. These are going, they're going to sell out. Okay. And so these are coming. We're expecting them in mid-September. And here's the thing that we haven't talked about that people are going to be really excited about. One of the things that you also allowed me, you, not only did you help me let, allow me to help you design the chest protector, you all, and, and then help me come, help you come up with the name Cobalt, we also spent a lot of time talking about the price, right? And I appreciate your staff of, of listening and hearing me out of why I felt the $179.99 price point was better than the, one, than the $200 price point. And as you mentioned, this is a, this is now a map item. That's that's still yeah. happening, right? Yeah. So we're not allowed to sell this for less, and that's fine by us. We think it's with more than worth the 180 price. So this is available for pre-order. These are coming mid-September. Okay, the only 72 that are being made right now are coming to us, and then they're coming to us via air freight. Stan is, 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 is basically showing his thanks for all the efforts we put in and allowing us to have these first, and we love it. And we really thank you, Stan, for that. And so these are coming in. We're going to have them in just a couple of weeks. So if you buy one of these 72 cobalt chest protectors uh, that's going to fit you for whatever level of protection that you want, you will have that around mid-September. So we're only talking two, three, well, let's just say three weeks away, right? And then we talked uh, before with all the things going on in COVID, we don't know when the next batch is coming. That could be October, it could be November, and, you know, it could be later. But as you said, these are all been, the 72 have been made, and you said they're going to be coming uh, from overseas tomorrow. Yeah. So you're shipping out tomorrow. You're hoping to get uh, them in and soon, and uh, and then to us soon. Um, I think here you're going to be putting the harnesses on the states. So that's going to take another week, I think, after you get those, mm -hmm. uh, as you mentioned. Um, and so... We're just so excited to be getting these. We're so excited to offer these at the 180 price point. And um, again, there's only 72. We don't expect these to last very long. And so you can be the first to get these um, if you grab one today. And then also available, um, uh, also available, of course, we've got mag masks. We've got the cryo helmet. We've got the cryo scarf that you've mentioned. I've mentioned the skull caps, all but the extra large. Uh, we do not have any shin guards in stock yet. We are not allowing those for pre-order because they're coming very soon. Very soon. As you mentioned, we should expect those also um, in, in, in about a week to two weeks. And so we're just going to decide to wait on those. The internal shell protectors that we also talked about being so good for the lower levels and then the uh, fast pitch softball umpires, they're priced at the same uh, $99.99. That's the best price you'll be able to get. 
considering that it's map. And so those are also available for pre-order. And so those are also coming very soon. So we're excited about being able to get these products in-house and then also being able to get them out to our customers. A lot of people do fall, fall baseball, a lot of summer, summer baseball is still going on, right? And so September is that month where there's summer and there's fall. And we're just so excited that you're allowing us to have these products first. Uh, and, um, and we're so excited about our customers. We love our customers. And some of these, a lot of our customers are going to love being able to get these first and bring yes. it. You, and we thank you so much for just being so thorough with your time tonight and your knowledge. And, and, uh, and, and Matt, I tell you, what, I'm just really excited. It's been a great night. Been so much looking forward to this. I know you all were too. Fantastic. Well, thank you. Thank you guys for this opportunity. And again, it doesn't end here because again, it's all about feedback. And so we want to hear from people too, when they get these out onto the field, they start getting it shaped to their bodies and wearing all different pieces. Let us know, you know, let us know what works. Let us know what's not working because we're always, we're always tinkering. We're always trying to see, you know, tweak something to make it better. So it, it's all reliant upon the feedback. So again, thanks to everyone who's tuned in. Um, we really appreciate your time and uh, thank you so, so much. All right. Thank you everyone for tuning in tonight. I want to remind you all the, the products that stand covered tonight. We covered the all-star mag mask. We covered the, um, the All-Star Cobalt Umpire Skull Cap, the Cobalt Umpire Chest Protector, which is available right now exclusively only at ump-attire.com, the first 72 for pre-order, the All-Star Internal Umpire Chest Protector, the All-Star uh, Cobalt Umpire Shin Guards, and the Cryo Helmet and Cryo Scarf. So we look forward to having you guys back again. Hopefully we'll talk to Stan and twist his arm a little bit and get him to show us some of his toys online. And um, if uh, you can ever need any help, feel, feel free to reach out to um, and um, or Matt, and uh, we'll see what we can do for you all. So gentlemen, if you have anything else to say, feel free to say goodnight to everybody and we'll end the cast. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.